Okay, so this is the, um, um, Kevin, we what's the panel? Name. We need to come up with a name. The what's deal. the name of our panel? This is the panel about uh, Undertale and <laughs> everything unrelated to Undertale. Okay, good. So everything. I think we should do a round of introductions of all of the panelists. Um, okay, also, so shouldn't there be more panelists in this? Yeah, I think everyone in the audience is part okay. of the panel. Okay, good. So I think you two could come up. You could probably so everyone in the audience has to be like way up here. No, they don't. <laughs> Don't make anybody alone. do the, anything that they don't no, want. Yeah, you should totally but stay. get up here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I think I I, I don't want to Kevin. I don't want to take the the take the reins from you for a moment. But I, I propose that we all do a little round of introductions. So yeah, that, okay. I'm, I'm I'm really surprised. Awesome. Everybody knows who they're talking to. I have so much power. Wow. Tip number, oh, tip, no. number, <laughs> tip number two for uh, musician hacks. Don't do whatever that no, this was. Is, this is the way to do it. That's a good sign. It means that the gear loves you. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, okay. I think we're going to introduce ourselves, and I'm going to start. My name is Doug Perry. If you use the internet in 2006 or earlier, you might know me as Drum Ultima. And um, I play vibraphone and percussion, and I hang out in jam space a lot, which is why I don't think you have a PhD and hit I, with sticks? I don't actually. I never made it to that degree level because I wasn't smart enough. Uh, I'm I'm Sam Bobinski. I play the bass, and uh, if you guys used the internet in before 2006, you knew me as Bazooka46 because that was my AOL screen name, uh, and that was my only online presence. Um, and um, <laughs> I discovered AIM. Uh, Chris, why don't you go ahead? <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris. I, I play the drums. Uh, I play with uh, Gunplay X with Noah over here, and we'll be doing a showcase with Random Battles tomorrow at midnight in the Jam Space. Mm -hmm. Woo. That's what this panel is, is an advertisement. It's Saturday, Sunday, midnight. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not Saturday at 12 a.m. It's Saturday at midnight. It's only 30 hours. Just add 24. I'll do it. <laughs> it's a timekeeping hack. So I guess, I guess I'm next. Uh, my name is Peter Bobinski. I was born on June 29th, 1991. Um, I am 26 years old. Um, I... <laughs> and ready to I like, mingle. I, I like, I like uh, long walks on the beach. I, 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 play, uh, I play the guitar. I dabble in the guitar um, sometimes. And I play with a band called Disco Cactus that uh, Doug um, forgot to mention. Um, and a, a little more, I, uh, yeah, and, uh, lately I've just been, I don't know, I've been thinking a lot lately about the, the current state of, um, uh, Madfest. Who cut off my mic? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't cough your mic. <laughs> your mic has an on-off switch. Did you accidentally hit the switch? My name is Kevin. Uh, I'm like Doug Perry. I don't have a PhD in hanging stuff with sticks, so. I don't either. <laughs> I don't. He meant like Doug Perry. Like Doug Perry. Okay. Um, my name is not Drum Ultima. Okay. I never used the internet before. I not Drum Ultima. Before. Point. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I'm a drummer and I like hitting stuff. Okay, and yeah, I'm not very good at it. I like to revere these guys. Yeah. All right. All right. So I'm supposed to be like the department head of Jam Space, and apparently the guy who runs this panel. So apparently I'm the only person listed on this panel, but everyone else is supposed to be included. So yeah, we found that out at registration. <laughs> <laughs> Full disclosure, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> I also play the guitar, but in a kind of a different way. I actually specialize in the, the E string. So really, really great with that string. You know, know all the different kinds of notes that you can hit on that string. This is, uh, it's kind of hard to play chords, though. Uh, when, when I try to play more than one note at once, it doesn't really work out so well. Wait, uh, is this the top E or the bottom E? It's, 
I thought there was only one. <laughs> it's, it's just tough. It's weird fucking way you put your guitar there. Is, yeah, it's Are you awesome. a toppy or a bottomy? <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> So I guess we're all here to, to share little tips and tricks, uh, like music hacks, like life hacks. I hate that term, by the way. It's such a stupid term. No, Li no. These are like music life hacks. They're supposed to make you better as a musician, but please leave here with an enlightened sense of... Please leave here with an enlightened sense of don't be us. Right? You should have stopped just after please leave here. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just leave. <laughs> okay, so as, as a percussionist, only versed in hitting snare drums, apparently, um, I want to talk about quad bass pedals. I know that someone here is very good at playing quad bass pedal. That would be me. Do you, you want to show us the special technique that they use to play quad bass pedal? Yeah, Sam, show us. <laughs> If you can't show us, I know someone I thought you were else. so funny with that. <laughs> I know someone else who's also really good at showing it. I know that's Peter. I, I'm not that great at it. <laughs> so this whole thing came out as, this whole panel came as a result of sleep deprivation, alcohol, music, MAGFest, these crazy guys, and MAGSTOCK. And I guess you just throw all that in a blender and a lot of crazy stuff happens. So I'm, again, I'm not really sure why we're up here, but we are. <laughs> one of the ideas that we thought about, it's a brilliant idea, it's, so you have two, you have one bass pedal, right? You can hit like, doom, doom, doom. But if you wanna play fast, it's kinda hard. So some guy decided to have two, right? We got double bass. But we decided, what if we took that to another level and had two double bass pedals for each foot? So it'd be like this. You, you would have to play it like a penguin, you know? For four-footed people, or... This sounds similar to, like, whenever, like, the quantum theorist was explaining, like, going, okay, so, one, like, one dimension, you gotta sing one foot. Yeah, that's it, that's it. That's pretty much it. It's like USB. You have to flip it over twice before it actually goes in. Some exactly. Of those, some of those PhDs are in quantum music. Yeah, like, don't hurt. I feel like you should be, you should be up here on this panel. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a teacher who was pretty good at quad bass pedals, though. Um, he was one of the, the, the remaining centaurs <laughs> in um, America. There's nice. like a small colony in Tennessee where they, the, the last couple of them were. It was. On the drum throne. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. The question is how do they sit on the drum set? Yes. Very they played the throne. They played the throne. Yeah. All right, good night, everybody. That was, that was the best joke of the panel. It, it's like the meme about how do centaurs wear pants, but how do centaurs play the drums? <laughs> but you know it, and that's all that matters. That's the only answer. Do we have a demo? Look up the YouTube video of the centaur playing quad bass pedal. It's a good reference. It's like the first YouTube video. Right. Came out in 2006. Yeah, I was going to say, that's what happened in 2006. <laughs> So the next thing is, everyone loves to play like, drums a lot, and I gotta use the mic, I gotta get used to these things, okay? Um, so, <laughs> nobody really enjoys staying at the drum set, right? I, 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 my personal saying is, everything sucks about playing drum sets, everything sucks about drum sets and playing it, okay? So, when I set up the drum set, you know, I like to cluster around me so everything's within easy reach. Um, but I know that there, there are people out there who like to set up drum sets where things are further apart. It gives a little more space. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's not one of those Asian shows where they just keep punching like random sound effects on. There's at least 40% Asians up here. <laughs> so, whose what? phone is ringing? How dare you? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it's not my phone. <laughs> so what I propose is um, setting up your bass drum, uh, your drum set, so everything is as far apart as possible. Like your bass drum is in your house. You bring your snare to Mag Labs. The toms are in the Gaylord. The cymbals are like in California at Mag West, and you left them there accidentally. 
Does anyone want to like demonstrate that for me? Like, just take the stool and like throw it out the door. You want to help me with that? I'll, <laughs> I'll demonstrate. My hat, my hat's in my uh, hotel room. I'll be back in like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gone. Sam! Sam! Okay. I'm, doing, I'm doing the thing on the panel. <laughs> Bring me a beer while you're at it. We have an open seat. For Two. Yeah, who wants to be a panelist? Micah. All right. All right, Micah. All right, let's get a big hand for Micah. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you all. So please, please introduce yourself and give us your internet credit. Um, I'm Micah. I do IT support. And really, I just like hearing the sound of my own voice. That's why I came up here. Woo! Thanks. <laughs> hey, hi, Kevin. Hello. Hello, uh, I'm having fun. Yeah. Okay. So, doesn't it feel uncomfortable to be sitting at a table in front of a bunch of people and not really know why you're here or what you're doing? Actually, now that you put it that way, it does feel very, very <laughs> awkward as I scan the room and I make eye contact with everyone one at a time. Oh, shit. Um, that was a middle finger from... Uh, Gracie, right there. Lovely woman, Grace. Okay. Thank you. You also, the, none of those were music tips, by the way. Just in case anyone's writing that down. Just, it wouldn't get you very far. Yeah. Moving on. Um, <laughs> okay, so, okay, so I got another special tip. Uh, as, a, as a drummer, um, playing rolls really, really, really fast. Let's hear it. My special technique is I take the snare drum, I take a bag of marbles, <laughs> and just pour it all over the head. <laughs> but since, since, since do, you have a, do you have a demonstration for us? I do, actually. I, I do <laughs> did you actually bags. bring marbles? Uh, no, that, I left those in. I left those at marble from the Oh my god. Wah, wah. Wait, what did you, what did you, what did you call it? Where's my beer, dude? Sam's back. Oh, yeah. You lost your seat. So, but the, other special, but the other special technique that we want to talk about is how we broke. Hi, guys. Sorry I'm late. I'm Sam Bobinski. I play bass. Uh, I'm in the band Disco Cactus with Doug and Pete, and uh, also the other Pete over there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Gemini 26. <laughs> and. Uh, my AIM username is Bazooka46. Hit me up, bros. Wait, you're 26? Yeah, he's 26. 46. What? <laughs> <laughs> Whose birthday is it? It's yours. Hey, we have a birthday. Oh, yeah, it was Peter's birthday recently. Did you make a sad happy birthday? Did you use this minor key that's more? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not taking requests. <laughs> What do you think this is? <laughs> this isn't a music panel. <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss? Nothing much. Okay. How old are you now? <laughs> okay. okay. What else do you guys want to know? I did want to say, Kevin, that I was impressed by your demonstration and that it really makes me, um, you know, think a lot about the hundreds of thousands of dollars I spent on music school. <laughs> how, many, how, many, how, how much do you have to pay back so far? <laughs> have you started paying back? All you have to do is come to a free panel. I, I was really relying on that like panelist registration. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so Chris, we've got to talk about that time that we broke uh, World's Fastest Drummer. Oh, was that last year? No, it was at Fest. This is a true story, by the way. This, this is a true another story. participant. These have no, all these been true, true stories. <laughs> so far, spoiler, true story. Spoiler, Maybe. true story. We, we want to talk about a little game <laughs> that we played at MAGFest 2017 called World's Fastest Drummer. Was anybody in the arcade? <laughs> who went to the arcade? Who, who saw World's Fastest Drummer? And played it. There's a few shamed faces as you're raising your hand. Okay. What's, what's, because what's every shamed face out there, every that? single shamed like... face out there had their record smashed by us. 
So, so, world's fastest drum, so world's fastest drummer, you know, you, you basically have like two. I dumped all my mouth everywhere. <laughs> Why would you do that? I don't know because I was doing a stupid <laughs> demo. Okay, so you take two drumsticks and you hit these two pads really as fast as possible. And you see on a serious thing. note, if I can interject right now, as an as a percussion educator, I find that very upsetting that this game is forcing young young people in this world to give themselves tendonitis all for a number and their <laughs> local recognition of their local arcade. There were no tickets. I, there were no tickets there when were we no played. Tickets. Did you take no. all the tickets? There are no tickets, yeah. It's just for recognition. It's just to show off. It's literally just to show off. And, and it's, we were the best at showing off. The, I, I, we were the best. I, I, you guys were the Did best, you and tickets, part of though, my reservation with the system is not because I wasn't the best. Because you were the worst. I, I, I could play much faster. I, I have the fastest rolls, the best. The bestest rolls, okay. The best rolls. <laughs> so, anyway, okay, to continue. So you have to hit these two pads as fast as possible, and you get a score. You know, you have this little running figure that runs down, like, down this road for like 10 seconds, and you're supposed to get, the number reflects how many strokes you get, uh, you know, how many uh, taps you got. What are you doing? So, world's fastest drummer. Um, so, most people, you know, who have played drums before, you, you can get 120, 130, 150. If you're like Chris, you could probably get like 160, 170. 166. No sweat. 166, okay. So, Don't rob me of that extra stroke. But we found out that if you play with a multiple people, you can get a much higher score, but not in the way that you're thinking. You have to have at least three people, each with two drumsticks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, so if if Julius was actually here, we would talk about our special <laughs> technique. But if I, only you were, here. you were here. Julius, get up here! Come on, talk about it. Welcome to the panel of shame. Grab a chair. Make yourself comfortable. If only he was here. <laughs> Julius, you were part. Julius you were a part of this. <laughs> yes, I was a part of it. Okay. <laughs> so, so you need Julius versus us, everybody. <laughs> Welcome the memory of Julius. <laughs> Julius, what do you play? Not drums. I play piano. Okay, and this is your keyboard, right? It is, in fact, yes. Okay. Sorry. No, it's, it's all right, Peter. Okay. So, tell us about the special technique that we used. So I believe. I believe the configuration was one person per pad, and then the third person playing both pads, each of them playing buzz rolls as fast as they could. So what happened was, what kind of score did we get? What was our ultimate high score? Like 166 was Chris's highest, and he probably smashed every Individual. single record there. To Individual. S3, it was like 220 or something. It's like 220? We got 255. 254, 253, and we just obliterated every single record that's on the record list. We took over the whole top 10 list. Yes. How am I going to apply this to, <laughs> how am I supposed to apply this to my career? We're applying this to software hacking because the owners, the owners of the game, the, uh, oh yeah, it was, uh, it was Hachi, oh that was right, yeah. So we posted our high score on Facebook and Hachi saw it. Uh, he was like, he's the head of Mag, uh, <laughs> of Magstock. So he saw he saw it. He's one of the developers on it. And he said, basically said, "This is world's fastest drummer, no s." Was it two seventy three? Thanks. Better than we thought. Thank you, man. Thank you. Round of applause. Okay. So, so, so what happened was this machine was apparently out of order for the rest of the event and. We didn't see it at all in subsequent events. And then when we asked about it, we asked Eric Holnerker and a few other folks like, who may have done development on it, and they said, we have no idea where it went, but apparently it was sold and shipped off without the fix in place. So the game's still broken. If you can find it, you can probably find a way to break it again. So if you wanted to play it next year, you can thank us for not being able to do that. Yeah, you might still see our records on it as well. So, so that's World's Fastest Drummer. That's a little story that we want to share. Doug Perry, everybody. We 
we move on with the panel, please? Sorry, I was okay, just trying fine, to eat fine. time. I'll move on to the non. Most of the most of my most of this panel is about drums. Oops. Okay. Fine. Okay. Give me a hack. Uh, no, I want, I want to see. You can literally sit on the table. You want to sit? I'm going to do that. Oh, sweet. I'm going to sit on the table. Careful. I don't know if you can. So, who in the audience uh, has uh, produced a song before? Okay, excellent. So you're all familiar with the concept of a compressor, right? You have an audio signal, right? And it's, it's some parts are loud, and some parts aren't so loud. So you use a compressor to make it so that all the parts are equally loud. Just like this, right? Yeah. So, um, so I've always found compressors to be pretty, pretty difficult to use. So one day I thought, instead of using a compressor, why don't I just take a white noise generator, right? And then just turn the gain up until it's like one click before clipping. Boom. Now all the sound is always equal volume. No compressor required. Like that, right? Just nope. like that. I feel like it's right. more of a producer hack than a musician hack. Though. Well, Thank you, Edder. Right, thank you, Edder. Oh, uh, Edder Bastos, uh, 30. Um, Screen name. Uh, Sigma Beta. Um, but bef clear. before that, I was Risk Breaker 927. Uh, <laughs> and, and he then... looks great from this angle, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, and before that, I was uh, Cavalier 247. Uh, and uh, I think before that I was Shadowcat247. I don't know, I had a lot of names. Uh, like the Chevy Cavalier, or you just didn't give a fuck? Uh, yeah, that's about it. It's yeah. like the Chevy, Chevy Cavalier and Shadow the Hedge. Uh, actually, uh, I, I, no, I was a fan of the uh, basketball Cavaliers. Yeah, no, I wasn't. Um, and uh, what do I, I, I'm just some guy, I don't, I, I don't play in a band. So. What's also the name of his racquetball team. No, uh, my racquetball team is the Fighting Mongooses. I wonder. Uh, I think it is mongoose. You're right. Yeah. No, but I think it's like mongoose. But, but then, <laughs> then what's more than one moose? Misai. Misai. Yeah. Bye guys. All right. Well, okay. Bye. But a quick aside. Does anybody know how the fuck this thing works? Because <laughs> it's like set up like a controller. And it's like, uh, I can, it's like you do the Konami code. Mateus Souza in the back. Come up to the front. Wait. Up, right, down, left. Nothing. Nothing happened. I didn't put my batteries in. It's not working. I tried the Konami code. It didn't work. Minus points for that. Mine's not doing Wait, what do I have to do? Hold start, and then do up. Even that didn't work. All right, let's continue. All right, let's actually continue with this panel. It's actually. Panel All right, I'm done with drums. I, I am done with drums. Okay, All right, Pete's a, turn. I already dumped everything out. All right, uh, I got a, I got a, um, I got a, I got a hack for you. This is, this is actually a real one. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Good. Fool me once. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle your seat, sir. Um, here's a, here's a, a studio trick for you. You're you're a mix engineer. Uh, imagine that. Uh, you know what? No, you are. You're a mix engineer. Um, this is a production hack. Um, yes, this will be on the test if you read the syllabus. Syllabus. Um, Look up, uh, if, if you go online, you look up, uh, there's a, a product by um, Funk Logic. It is called the Palindrometer. It is a rack mount. Um, it is set up like a compressor, um, but it's knobs that don't do anything. So you set it up in your studio, and um, when somebody, uh, and you're working on their mix, and a certain person, I don't know, Doug Perry, says, Oh, I want this um, a different way. Can you do it like this? You turn on the palindrometer, and you turn the knobs. And then what happens? What happens? It sounds great now, right, Doug? This is actually a percussion hack, actually. 
I, I, I th- is finally we're getting somewhere. I have a related hack. Okay. Um, and this is also a real one that really works in real life. If you're ever okay, this is this is for any of you who happen to also be orchestral percussionists. How many orchestral percussionists have we got in here? Woo! Yeah. All right. Right here. So, and this is something that I've Are done. Are you eating? Yes. <laughs> you want some? You want yeah. Some? Here, take some. Take one. All right. So this is what you got to do. You're playing. You're trying to. You're trying to play an orchestra, and then the conductor stops there and he goes, "Percussion. Do you have softer mallets?" And you know he doesn't know what he's talking about. He has no idea. So you have your big box of sticks. And you go, "Yeah, one second. You go. And then you take the same ones out again. And I swear to God, it works. It actually <laughs> works. They they believe you. Yeah. Because sometimes a compliment would be nice, Chris. Jeez. <laughs> Compliments are earned, not given. <laughs> I had a, I had actually had a pretty similar one. Uh, I play bass in orchestras sometimes, and like, and inevitably the conductor will always be like, "Basses, you're too loud," which is not fucking true. It's not. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many of you are, there are. It, it's not. So you just like play softer and softer, and then you say, "It's still too loud." So then like, you. The, my favorite thing to do is you. Pretend you're playing your instrument. If you get everybody in the section to do it, you get bonus points. Everybody <laughs> pretends to play, and in- inevitably, 100% of the time, the conductor will go. <laughs> <laughs> so really, he just wants you out of your orchestra. But as, if I get paid, fine. <laughs> this is kind of like parallel to, to working in corporate America, right? It's like that's, that's, Please go on. <laughs> silver bullet in dealing with any kind of upper management. You just appease them. You pretend to do what they want, but you really don't. But you're really uh, stealing from the um, from the accounts receivable Peter, downstairs. <laughs> Peter, just so you know, this panel's being recorded. Don't oh, tell her I'm doing that. Peter, this panel's being recorded. How do you know that's my real name? <laughs> what is your real name, then? Yeah, you didn't tell us your internet identity before 2006. It's this. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually. Oh what it yeah, is. it is that. <laughs> <laughs> nice, sticky boy. So this, this is, is an F major boy. seven chord. It's called major seven because you take the fifth derivative of the integral. Here comes a theory hack. You get that really nice sound, but so we so wait wait wait, wait wait no no it's the it's the lip, it's the infinite integral. It's the infinite integral taken from the bound x is less than. Rectangles? A number. And, and you, you kind of get something like Don't this. Don't forget to do your use of with the Nord Electro. Like it doesn't come out right unless you tweak the numbers a little bit. It comes out like... You know, it's like a... It's like a... It's uh, the mix of calculus mode. Okay. So what, what you basically do is you, you keep trying to... You, you take the read derivative of the anti-subnet, and when you get the IP address, finally what happens is you just get like. <laughs> oh, it's so good. No, make me yes. happy. Make me happy. I need to be happy. No, he left me with that. Resolve it. Resolve it. No, we got, we got a question. I no. Have a question. Yeah, what's oh, the question? Um, I've heard compression come up a couple times. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, but we do recommend either WinRAR for Win PC Win or Keika if you're on Mac. Sometimes UnRARX, but lately it's been messing up. Hey, 7-Zip is okay. 7-Zip is good. Okay. Uh, what, did, how many times have you used Win, WinRAR? Use it more. It's free. It's free for Well, I've used it once, like th- on this keyboard actually. Like I, I compressed this keyboard in real life using the WinRAR like software. And it's then use the open source. Like, I looked it up on SourceForge, uh, so, so I don't really know. Did you ever run out of the trial? What are you doing down there? Only seen it. He's, he's gone. He's gone. So how many octaves do you lose? Yeah, it's how, many, how many octaves do you lose with WinRAR? Mark, Mark Zuckerberg, he was like, hey Peter. Uh, I, I heard about that. Not- <laughs> I can't do this with a straight face. did really well for a while. For a while. <laughs> I cried. I lost. How long was it? Like 10 minutes? <laughs> I got like 10 minutes. Well, anyways. 
Thanks, dude. Thank you. Thank you for that 10 minutes. They're working on the next distro for that. Uh, try to stay posted, but you know, stay posted. Like, the next few weeks should be out. Something sweet. Hey, can I try something? Oh yeah. Sure, I, I've always had an, an infatuation for big butts, and I, <laughs> and I really, I can't, uh, I can't tell a lie. Do you guys have any singing hacks? It's like that movie with Jim Carrey, with Liar Liar, but in real life. <laughs> so no. So I, I have a singing hack. Just I have a singing hack. Like on the hotel TV. I have a singing hack. Like, guys, guys, I have a singing hack. I don't sing. Uh, no, there's another one. I think it's called um, Auto Tune. <laughs> That's a no, good no, one. That's like a real one, though. That, that's well, like too real. <laughs> no, the, actually, I do, I do have some advice it's for singing. It's made by a car um, company. I think I think it is hard for some, a musician to really get into the like the headspace and the identity of a singer. I think for a lot of us, we all deal with imposter syndrome um, when we you know try to sing in front of people. It's like, well, well why, how, why can I do this when somebody else can do it so much better? And you really have to just get up in the morning. You have to look at yourself in the mirror. And you have to go, you stupid whore. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Who are you? Don't look at me like that. Don't you look at me like that. You should start crying by now. Um, and then take a shower so you don't know that you're crying. And I find that that's really helpful when you actually go out there to like just, just you know, let yourself go. To just really like open up and, and let your voice just, just explode out from your bosom. Like a pregnant manatee. <laughs> that underscoring was amazing. <laughs> By the way, I figured out how to do this thing. It's you have to hold select and do that thing. And so I turned it off. Cause I hate it. Nice. Wait, it still doesn't work. It's select. Yeah, I'm holding select and doing it. Up, right, left. Up. Oh wait, up, right, down, left. Up, right, down, left. Up, right, down, left. It didn't work. God, you guys suck. <laughs> I think it's dependent on the Wi Fi signal, so it, is. it might work. Oh. Hmm. And whether you're holding it There's no Wi Fi in my corner. You also need All right, what's the next hack, Kevin? Uh, I was going to move on to keyboards or vibes. I don't know if I have any vibe hacks. What, what, kind of, what, what do you want to know about? Well, so, so Doug, you're very good at playing two mouths and four mouths. Can you play 16 mouths? No, actually. That was something I wanted to talk about. All right. Sh can you show us, like, 60 mouths at once? Hey, Doug doesn't have his microphone anymore. <laughs> Sorry, I dropped all my drumsticks. So this is the microphone. It was invented by Bert Bacharach in 1776. Who made that one? Did HTC make that one? Uh, it was... Uh, <laughs> it was... It, it was Nike. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I'm a Canon fan. It's a Fender what? Vibe Caster. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> so okay. If you guys have seen me play, you'll know that I play with four mouths. And um, Kevin was just asking about sixteen mouths. And it's actually there's not. I, I'm sorry to say this, Kevin, but it's, there isn't really a way to play with sixteen mouths, and it's not better. Sixteen. It's actually better to only play with. Because you need the other mallet to pose, or the other hand, I'm sorry, to pose. Because if you're playing vibraphone, and you really get into something, your hair gets in the way, and you can't see what you're doing, so you need to be able to go.
<laughs> what? <laughs> All right, what's the next hack? How many hacks left? How many hacks left? None. Uh, keyboards. Thanks we want to talk about How long is this panel? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one way that I've learned from my mentor. Julius. Uh, he passed away tomorrow, unfortunately. Yeah, sorry, Julius. <laughs> the way that he described it to me was the apple is so 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 far from the tree. Excuse me! <laughs> God, they're loud. Pay very, very close attention, like guys. Watch, 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 watch. It took me a lot of years to learn how to do this, actually. Julius is about to lose his shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Come on. I'm about to lose his shit. Inverted chord. Though this is a perpendicular chord. <laughs> 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 here's, here's an acute equal chord. That's not, a right, it's right that's there. not the right chord. Actually, it's, it's right there. It's right there. Shit. I did like it. Like, hypotenuse I put right my there. arm down and went like that. And I'm like, oh, oh English? Yeah, or, no, hypotenuse not. right there. Oh. No, no, oh. Up, up a little. Mm -mm. Back that way. <laughs> Got it. Uh, what, what's the infamous Pythagoras chord? Uh, here's the parallel chord. That's pretty much all I know. Okay. So uh, then, how do you how do you like move chromatically? Do you like take the transpose or anything like that? Oh, I see. The thing is, like, you never need to know how to play in more than one key as a piano player. Cause, watch me. Like, like, watch. I'm gonna play the same key. If I can hold this for you, this is the this is also a hack. <laughs> so it's it works best with two people actually. So, if you gig and you only want to play in one key, make sure you have a friend under you to do this for you. I think we have another audience question. I've done it accidentally. I did it once. I did it once, but it was a mistake and I can't repeat it. I think it might sound something like. I did it by accident. Can I, can I answer your question with another question? Uh, I'm going to answer your question with another question. Who the fuck thought it was a good idea to make these badges with like these po this pointy shit on them? I already cut, cut my hand. And then it's like, like they put batteries in it like that's a good idea. <laughs> fuck you. Don't wear these in the pool, guys. <laughs> uh, keep going. Uh, answer the question, please. Okay. Um, oh, that's right. I forgot. I forgot about this. There's a. There's this really awesome demonstration about how to play giant steps in the key. Oh, this is I'm actually mad. <laughs> giant steps in the key of C. Oh, show of hands. Who has heard giant steps by John Coltrane? <laughs> All right. This is giant steps. John John Coltrane. Who's that? John. Is he the one who sings? John Davis. Jack and the Beanstalk. Thank you. 
It went by two Who are you talking to? <laughs> 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 Peter, it's ha it one hasn't even been one. This is the one that goes C E G C G C G. Wasn't there like a F sharp times three in there? There might have been. Okay. I think there. I don't know. It wasn't an F sharp times three, but it was F sharp three times. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's really sharp. It is. Um, do we have any? Okay, we talked about keyboard a lot. Do we have any general questions about being a musician or playing music? Or anything really. The composition tips always ask for an extension because you're not going to finish it on time. It's too bad Ben left because um, with a composer in Disco Cactus, Ben Wallace, I don't think he's ever finished a piece in time. And and it's, we're we're going to be doing um the the Iron Jams thing, you know. Um, and we're excited to work with him. And um, I, I'm not sure what the extension policy is, but we should have our arrangement done by next week. Um, don't, you mean, don't you mean by MAGFest 2018? No, I haven't. Isn't that next done. week? That's no. Oh, oh yeah, no, that's in January. Yeah. Yeah, so that's next week. Yeah, yeah. sorry, I thought you meant next year. I thought you meant a whole year. So you're basically saying I'm going to die from overstaffing. Yeah. No, you're. Exactly you'll you're be fine. Can we turn this panel into the talk shit about Ben because he's not here panel? <laughs> yeah, he never does anything on time. He smells bad. He's yeah, stupid bad. face. He's stupid. Face. Why did you look at me when you said that? <laughs> so, I thought you'd agree with me. I guess I don't know. <clears throat> no. Okay. No. There's all you. You. You will. You should ask for an extension because it should not be expected that you finish your piece on time. That is an absolute true 100% uh, composer hack. Um, especially if you're working in the video game industry. Um, video game industry generally has. Um, not um, not nearly as tight of deadlines as like the film industry does, which is why that you should push them even further. Um, if a game is set to ship in September, you can finish in like October. It's fine. Um, uh, you're a composer. You got it. Y use a number three pencil. <laughs> you'll f you'll figure out. You'll figure it out. Use a f oh, what did I hold on hold on hold on we we gotta talk about this okay so you use Muse Score okay here's here's a composer hack for you take some money out of your college savings or life savings fund and buy yourself a real program oh. like like oh. Finale or Sibelius or like um, Finale and not Sibelius oh wait, wait, no 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 hold on hold on yeah ultimately you could get a real program like Dorico. <laughs> Um, no, because MuseScore, I, I, you know, I wish I could say that MuseScore is a great resource because it's free and accessible and everybody can use it and easily distribute their music to other people. Um, yeah. But it is, it's um, better. Awful. It, it, you can say it. No, no, no. It's, it's better to use a program that costs at least $600. <laughs> um, because then you get their tech support and there's also a manual that you can download as a PDF. Um, that will explain things like keyboard shortcuts. You mean a guy named Emmanuel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my dream come true. It's the same business model as Whole Foods. You can get a bagel for $2 somewhere, but you can get the same bagel for $8, and it's just a better bagel. So if you pay more for your software writing, uh, music writing software, hashtag capitalism, it will be better software. Wait, so Sibelius is non GMO? No, he was a composer. He free lived range. in like the 1800s to the 1900s. It's free range, as in oh. Finland. Okay. Uh, hey. Wasn't he from Wasn't he from Harry I Potter? Think, I think they, I think Avid is doing something. I think they are starting to introduce GMO production though, because there's too much pirating. So what are good like grass-fed, you know, music transcription programs? Pa paper. That's good. That's good. <laughs> what about We have ourselves a comedian in the audience. <laughs> what about Fruity Loops? Why don't you just come up here and do it then? What about you? You're so microphone. good. Peter, you can talk to us about Fruity Loops and all those times you try to compose on. I don't compose. Ch try it with soy milk. Oh, what's your question about how Fruity Loops is awful? We really should. That's the, that is a real aside. Hang on, don't nobody listen, dude. We should really do that. It is a great idea. Yeah, you should. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, absolutely not. We've never done that. That's a great idea. Any 
Any other questions? We're we're running short on time. Actually, I want to ask. Yeah. What? What's your question? Panelists get priority. Shh. <laughs> Who? Magic carpet. Oh. I, I oh, now that we're at this point in the panel, I would like to um, I would like to make a note before we take our last question of the evening. Um, we have lost uh, about four fifths of our audience. <laughs> Thank you guys for staying. Thank you guys for staying. Thanks for enduring this. Thanks for coming. Including our own friends, by the way. <laughs> our friends left. I watched my friends leave. They looked at me and they left. <laughs> Kevin, do you have anything you wanna you wanna say before we? I mean, I'm assuming this is an hour long panel. If it's longer than that, so help me God. It's an hour and a day. All right, everybody. It's now, Kevin, I, that's just that's just ridiculous. I don't believe. Yeah, this is an hour and a half long panel on the schedule. Wait, is it really? Yes. So, it's an hour and a half? Or much. Class is getting out early today. If, if you just turn the clock ahead 30 minutes, it'll be over. Panel at hack. Some we're just going to start, at some point we're just going to start karaoke. Yeah. <laughs> so, if I have to stay here for another I, half an hour, no, I'm going to no, start no, no, eating no, the no, table. I, I, wanted, I wanted to ask you guys a serious question about like any nightmares that you guys have had with music. Like oh. performing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> um, Why couldn't we just make the panel about that? <laughs> well, we have another half an hour. I could talk about this for 90 minutes. <laughs> do, I, do I have any uh, about um, music nightmares? Yeah. I, have a I, had, oh, I do. Okay, you yes. go, because yes, I don't have God. anything. Okay, so once upon a time, I was, um, I was playing. This is a piece that you all know. I was playing the 1812 Overture with the Hartford Symphony Orchestra. It's one of the, the it's the one it's the one that you hear <laughs> It's the one that you hear for the 4th of July with the cannons even though it was written by a Russian composer. But um Yeah, that's it. So I was I was playing crash cymbals. So you guys know what crash cymbals are, right? They're like the cymbals on the drum set except you're holding them and you hear them together. And you hold them by these like little straps, these like little other straps that um, they go in the cymbals and you hold them. And so I was getting ready to play and um, I just, I, I pick them up and I was just like, huh, I wonder, I, I, gotta, I should probably make sure that the straps are like tied together so like, you know, the cymbals don't fall. This is real. So I mean, it's, I'm coming up to a spot where I have like four big solo crashes, it's just me. And I turn the cymbals over and I notice that one of them has come completely undone and that if I were to hit the symbols together um, the symbol would fall off and onto the ground and then my big solo would be over and so would all the rest of my big solos and <laughs> at that moment it was I've never felt time slow down like this as I I scanned the room I was like there's another symbol over there if I take off my shoe I might be able to hit it that's not going to work. Is there like a stick or something? There are no sticks around. Does anybody else have symbols? Is anybody paying attention? The other two like percussionists are just like. <laughs> I'm paying attention. Come on. So I was like, oh my god, what am I going to do? And I, it's just like four, three, two, one, two, three, two, one. It's close enough. One, go. <laughs> and it didn't fall off. I sat back down immediately, started going at it again. Get my soul. Hit it again. It's okay. I look at the conductor, the conductor's, just, everything's normal. I look at the other guys, they're still like. That's called a rest in music. <laughs> so did, did nobody, did nobody notice? <laughs> and yeah, so basically, have you ever seen the YouTube video of the kid um, who was playing the Star Spangled Banner in his like high school? And he, like, yeah, he hits a symbol and he doesn't know, what, the, the symbols fall down and he doesn't know what to do, so he just stands there and salutes <laughs> for the rest of the thing. That was, I, I, that was almost me. That almost happened in front of like a live audience. In, in a big theater, I was almost that kid. That is my nightmare story. I think it's a sign that we're doing this panel right that you have to ask, is this a real thing or not? <laughs> it was real. That was real. That really happened. I thought you meant like literally like nightmares about, yeah, like literally nightmares about music. I, speaking of which, I, have, I, I do have a nightmare that came true. <laughs> do you remember when we played in Battle of the Bands, we played, um, and chemo too. That was a nightmare that came true. So I had a, a 
one year I had a dream that uh, it was in high school. We were playing at Battle of the Bands, and I was I was playing, and uh, suddenly like the drummer just stopped, and we all looked at each other, and we all just stopped and started yelling at each other. And then the next year I was with a different band with Pete, and I think it was the same bass player or whatever. But like it like almost happened and I almost like threw up on stage <laughs> because like there was one part where the, the drummer, drummer the drummer just like didn't change time signatures when he was supposed to and he just like looked at us and he kept doing this and we were like F I swear Christ like <laughs> you had one job <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but uh that was a night that was scary uh it was a scary time I was nervous what? never has another question uh, we're, we're in the nightmare segment. Uh, let it go. All right. Oh, wait, wait, hang on. I got it. Get out of my way. I got it. Oh, you actually know it? Of course he does. Okay, I don't know. You need the bass line? Here, I'll help you out. I don't want to play with the bass line. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I think this whole panel should have should have been Sam playing Baby God back for an hour and a half. Okay, so thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, this has been, uh, it's uh, live from New York, it's Saturday night. Uh, uh, the, your hosts, uh, uh, Kevin James, uh, uh, Peter Kim, uh, Kevin James, uh, uh, Chris, uh, Chris James, and Doug Perry, and uh, I'm Alec Baldwin. Good night. It's Chris Jim for short. <laughs>